I think this is a five. Um, yeah, I had four, four of us in camp last night. Three guys showed up. Tony, the guy I met the first day on the trail, he's doing in and out, but he's doing the whole trail. So he's moving his car up a bit, hiking in, turning around and hiking back to his car, moving his car, doing the same thing. Anyway. I shared a camp with him last night, ran into him. Uh, he's heading towards Table Rock, so, but he's, he's actually heading west to get back to his car. Then he's gonna move his car to Table Rock, hike out to here, turn around and go back. So I'm, I think I'm gonna run into him again. Whew, a little sluggish this morning, don't know why. But we'll keep moving along. I gotta do a minimum of ten. Nine to nine to ten. Anywhere between there I'll be good. Alright. I think we're going to Laurel Falls. That's one of the highlights today. And then we'll be along we'll be along the creek. We gotta cross over like seven bridges. I really I remember that section. It's pretty though, it's nice. Okay. Yeah, I'm breathing heavy because I just had a big climb. First thing right out of camp, straight up. Oh, I hate those. Alright, let me let me put you away. Beautiful, beautiful morning. Look at, look at that. There's the sun right there. Beautiful. We're up on this ridge. We've been up here for a mile and a half now, going on two. Beautiful. About 60 degrees. There's a nice breeze. Actually, it's gusty. I keep hearing the limbs squeaking. I can just praying that none of them come down on me out here but there's a lot of people I've had four or five ahead of me that I know of and two that I've passed head on going in the opposite direction so there's a, you know, there's a fair amount of people on this on this trail way out here in the middle of nowhere uh, some heading east most of us are heading east. A few are heading west. That's like I said earlier in another video. The uh, westbound is much more strenuous at the on the first three days than going eastbound, where you have two, two and a half easier days. So it gives you time to have your legs and your body. About uh, ease into it. So, but yeah, this is, um, I'm really enjoying this morning walk. And that's just what it is, too, just a stroll in the woods. Beautiful day.
Be kind today. <laughs> Be kind. Feels pretty good right now too. I can sit down to probably 28 pounds, going down two pounds a day. Well, actually, I'm not carrying two pounds of food a day. I think I'm down to a pound and a half. I really paid back a lot. Uh, so it's a pound and a half less per day. I hear a bird. My first bird of the morning. Where are they hiding? No wildlife here. And we're in the wildlife management area right now too, so I don't know why they're not in here. Alright. Hopefully this will last for a while. I'm enjoying this. Beautiful falls here. Look at this. Whoa! Don't get blown over. Look at the, look at the leaves. Don't lose my hat. Yeah. Don't lose it. <laughs> yeah, look at that. That's gorgeous. Somebody's camped right on the top of the falls over there too, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, it's a beautiful trail today, but it's a freaking dangerous one. Limb, I had a limb come down three feet in front of me. I heard it. I couldn't free. I heard it coming down through the trees because these trees are like, they're over 100 feet tall. And, uh, see, did you hear that? Freaking paranoid now. This freaking limb came down. I, did, I knew it was coming down. I didn't know where it was three feet in front of me man i just met these two couple too they were just on the other side of it they said oh it's just going to get worse i said what do you mean you know, is it supposed to get even windier this afternoon so i don't know i might cut it short today we'll see that was too close for comfort i heard tree limbs and trees two tre one tree and one limb earlier today come down off trail and I'm thinking oh no big deal I've heard that before but when it comes down like feet from you that's uh that's a little too close to home yeah it is howling I don't know what's going on some sort of cold front I guess came through it's supposed to get like down to 29 28 29 tonight so this must be like a, a northerly cold front that came through and this is uh the wind line because there isn't a cloud to sky it is beautiful except for the wind oh man i got two people behind me a couple hundred yards so if i run into problems hopefully they can get me out <laughs> oh this is gonna be interesting terrific all right, I'll put you away. People, people are funny out here. <laughs> I, just, I just ran into two women. They're just, it's a Saturday. Everybody's out. Oh, man. So anyway, they're huddled under these mangroves. And they have day packs on. And they're, they're both stooped over. Looking at like this little plant. So I'm going, what are you doing? He goes, oh, don't you recognize these? I go, no. They go, these are are Okani blue Okani bells. I guess I didn't. My phone was off. I didn't have it on, so I didn't take a picture. I'm sure I'll come up to more of them because they only grow around here, Okani, South Carolina. So. That was funny talking to them. Then a little while later, I ran into four other women. They're just out here on a day hike. And 
I told him to be careful because our limbs are coming down. And the other one goes, are you from the East Coast? And I go, oh yeah, the Boston area. And she puts her hand on her heart and says, have a good hike. <laughs> so that was, that was pretty funny. I get that a lot. I, when I checked into the hotel the other night, same thing. Are you from, are you from New England? How can you tell? Yeah, I guess, I don't think I have an accent, but I guess I do. I don't know. It's pretty cool when people pick up on it. And then, and usually it, it's the people who have ties or who, who have lived in, in New England and they're transplant. You know, they recognize the accent because they're around all these southerners and as soon as somebody from home comes into town, we stand out, I guess. So, this is my third bridge. <laughs> They've uh, rebuilt one other one. There was one old one. and But this is coming up here. I see it looks like a new, a rebuilt one. But yeah, this is the section where there's a whole bunch of bridges. And this is uh, number three. All right, well, I'll take you up to it. They're all these act. They're all pretty much the same. I think there's a couple that you have to go up, like maybe a half a dozen stairs. But most of them are these, you know, little flat things. Yep, brand spanking new. Nice job. Well, I guess we're going up. Just had lunch at the campsite here, and uh, coming up on these falls, it's called uh, Virginia, Virginia Hawkins Falls, should be right here around the corner, yep. Right there. Temperature dropped like 10 degrees. It's going to be cold tonight. Yep, Virginia Hawkins Falls. This is about the most water I've ever seen come over this thing. Usually I'm here, it's much drier, but after that storm two days ago, still a lot of water coming down off these, off these hills and mountains. Uh, at least another four miles to go. It's uh, a 
Why is my phone doing that? So, my, my watch was sending out an emergency message that I fell. I didn't fall. I just shook my wrist for a minute because I had something on it that thought I fell. So all I need is I have them send out a, have my watch send out an SOS for no reason. Uh, Alright, we got a big climb way up there. Great after lunch. It's what I really need. Alright, catch you guys later. I don't know where I'm going yet. I'd like to get at least another four miles in, so let's see where it takes us. Alright guys, let me give you a tour of my digs here on the trail. <laughs> this is my hammock setup. Right now I'm uh, cooking my dinner. It's uh, I'm having cheesy north sides, uh, some kind of pasta. Um, so while that's while that's going down there, I'm uh, in here having uh, Fritos. <laughs> Plus it's nice and warm because the heat's rising from cooking, and and it's filling this whole cavity with warm air. So it root feels really good in here because it's cold outside. It's going down to it's pretty low now. It's probably in the 40s. Going to go down to 28. So I'm, I'm soaking up as much warmth as I can. <clears throat> so this is my head end right here. In the head end, we have a, um, we have little peak storage compartments. One here and there's one at my foot end. And this is my pillow. Okay. So, um. When I get into camp, I try to get out of my, my hiking clothes, socks, undies, shirt, t-shirt, I mean shorts, and I put those up in here because in the morning, about an hour before I want to get up, I can reach over my head, grab my undies, my shorts, and my t-shirt, and I can pull those. I take them and I put them in my sleeping bag so they warm up so I don't have to put on cold cold clothes and usually it's damp and you know so this way here it has an hour to warm up and dry out a little bit and uh, and then I have a ridge line up here this ridge line keeps the hammock in a perfect position as far as as far as how it how it has that that hammock curve to it all right this here this here is a permanent fixture and it guarantees you a perfect hang all the time, or pretty close to all the time. Um, and then this here also, which is inside the bug net, um, I can hang stuff. So the first thing I hang is my jaw for at night. That's my pee jaw, so I don't have to get out of the hammock. It's one liter. It's good for three filling. It's good for three, three, uh, whatever. Three runs to the, to the to the men's room, I guess. All right, and then if it fills up, if I if I had drank a, drank a lot of water during the day, I just reach out and dump it on the ground. No big deal. It's only liquid anyway. So that's my pee jar, and it collapses to a little tiny thing like this. It's it's a collapsible one, so it doesn't take up any room while I'm packing. I like it. It works out really good. All right, now I have a couple of these little ridge organizers and you can put your sunglasses in here you can put your headlamp in here if you do if you want your phone snacks whatever you want to put in here you can put in here I have two of them this one here I usually put a bar in here for at night if I get really cold I'll have a little bar that now help warm me up and then I put my uh, earplugs in here and then and sometimes I'll put my headlamp in here but right now I have my headlamp hanging Oh, uh, right here. This here works out pretty good. I can see what I'm doing in here. Okay, now let's switch over to the uh, foot end. Oh, and on the ground I put a foam mat. Just so I keep everything. 
um, dirt free. Well, try to at least. And that's a little pack that I use. I mean, a little um, cut down foam pad that I use um, when I'm traveling on the trail. I can just put that over a wet log or a rock or something. Um, it's four sections, just enough for me. And then I use it out. I use it here too sometimes. Um, so this is my uh, 30 degree top quilt. It's like a sleeping bag, but it doesn't have a zipper on it. So you use it like a big puffy blanket. Um, okay, this is another peak. I just got this one about a year ago. I like this one a lot. Um, I usually put a water bottle in here sometimes. I'll throw my phone and charger in here. I'll let it charge for an hour before I go to sleep. Sometimes I'll put my puffy jacket in here if it's warm and I'll take the phone and I'll stick it in one of the other peak organizers that are up there so that everything is handy. Now, I'll just slide that down. It all slides on this ridge line. It works out really well. So, we have another peak storage compartment up there. And up there is all my warm clothes. My um, stuff that I'm gonna, I may need at night if I get really, really cold. Uh, sometimes, if I know it's going to rain, I'll put my rain gear up there. Because my pack is hanging on the outside over here. See my pack? I have a separate ridge line here. That yellow line right here is a separate ridge line. And I hang all my wet clothes off of here. And I hang the um, backpack off of that too. I have nothing on the ground at night because the raccoons are little thieves. They take every. If you leave your shoes out here, one may be gone in the morning. Or both of them. <laughs> you can't leave anything on the ground. So you hang everything. I hang my shoes up. I hang my shoes up here uh, at night. Yeah. So anyway, let's come back inside. So this, so my peak organizer at my feet. It's a little, you gotta be a little, you gotta stretch a little bit to get to it, but I'll have my puffy in there. I'll have a little extra warm layers. I'll have uh, my, maybe a beanie, wool beanie in there. Whatever I need to keep warm. I'll have my gloves, my winter gloves in there so that I can grab all that stuff before I leave my cocoon. Uh, and, and get out into the elements. So everything, all that stuff goes at my feet. Um, and then uh, in a minute I'll get out and I'll show you where I set up tonight. I'm on a little fire road, access fire road, and there's a bunch of other campers over there, probably ooh, eight. Eight campers are right over there. They're probably a hundred feet away. Um, so I'm about ready to bring my dinner over there and have dinner with them. I'm just waiting for it to rehydrate over here. Let's see. Let's see how we're doing. Oh yeah. I gotta show you this setup. This is way, way better than a pot than those those coffee mugs. I, I, I don't think I'm ever gonna bring one on a trip again. This is way, way better. So I made a little lid out of um one of those oven pans, aluminum pans you get at Walmart. You know, you put your turkey in it and stuff. Well, at the bottom, I just cut a couple of circles. That makes my cover for my pot. Let's see if that, that's not too hot. Okay. So this is my setup. This is my my food, my beer can, right? You guys, you guys know about that, the uh, paint can that I use. And then this is my alcohol stove, and this works out good because it's all metal. So I can raise this, I can cook right here off the hammock, or you could do it in the vestibule of your uh, tent. But it's got a nice metal base, so you're not going to catch anything on fire. There's so many leaves. If I put that on the ground, the leaves would have caught fire. Um, so, um, so that's that. So then I got this here little windscreen. And I got it set up where it sits right around the paint can. And it sits on those little nubs where the handle would go, one on each side. Yep, right there. And that, that holds this up. And then I put my alcohol. Then I put my alcohol in there, light it, put the pot on there, put the cover on there, and in about three minutes I have boiling water. But look at how much it boils. 
So I use this as my coffee cup. I use it as my coffee cup. I use it as um, my um, bowl to um, to cook. Oh yeah, that's rehydrating. Nice, yeah. Okay, and then what I did is I picked up the Fritos. I'm gonna lose them in a minute. What I did is I picked up this little pot holder. Because when you um when you're boiling the water, that little pot is gonna get hot, so I have this little rubberized pot holder. And I just go over here like this. And I pick up my pot to move it around. It cools off pretty quick, so it doesn't stay hot for long. But yeah. And those are my two little jars of alcohol. And I have a big lighter, and then I have my flint. I like my flint. I have the big as that. Like that. All right. That's my setup. I'm going to eat, and I will get back to you guys later. Okay, here's my outside. This is the door I'm going in and out of right now. Uh, my bag that I filter my water, that's my water bag. But this is a little fire road here. I'm on the end, I'm on the edge of this little road that's just overgrown. They're not using it anymore. But yeah, right now I'm uh, Doing, doing a hot chocolate. Right. Not keto approved, but I don't care at this point. I'm cold. And then here's my other side. Yeah. And then those are the other campers up there. They're on that little uh, peninsula. They actually, they're boy. Other than those two tents right over here. Oops. Other than those two, um, I've been hiking on and off with them. We've been playing catch up for the last couple of days. All the others are a Boy Scout crew uh, group. They're out for the weekend. They'll be hiking back out tomorrow. So yeah, nice little spot. They got the bear bags. They hang the bear bags up there. I just leave mine here. It's in the can, so I just leave my can here. If a bear comes along, he may roll it down the hill, though, so I'll have fun trying to find it, but that's about it. I have no food left in my bag, so. But, yeah, this is my setup, so. All right, folks, catch you tomorrow. Yeah, see, I wanted to show you the alcohol stove. See how it blooms? Comes out the side. That's why if you have a larger pot, you'll boil water way faster than a narrow coffee cup type pot. Because the flames will go up the side of the pot. Really, I mean, it will boil water, but it takes a while. Make sure, I was just checking, make sure my phone isn't getting too hot here. <laughs> um, but yeah, what, what, one of these bowls, it, it boils within, within a, just a couple of minutes. It's really, really efficient. So, um, here we go, now it's running out. The trick is to figure out how much alcohol to put in it for the amount of water that you're boiling. And that takes time. Typically, two cups, um, you need about an ounce. So if you're only doing a small cup of coffee, sometimes you can uh, get away with a half an ounce. But, um, yeah, I just thought I'd show you that. I love the alcohol, especially in cold weather. You don't have the problems like you do with the canister stoves where, because the air is so cold, the canister stoves cannot turn the vapor. That's how they work. Uh, your flame comes from vapor, vapor, and you only get vapor when the fuel is warm. And those canisters, when it gets down to 32 degrees, they're very inefficient and uh, very finicky. So I... I always go with alcohol, and even in warm weather, I try to take alcohol because I'm just so used to it, um, and I like it. So I know exactly how much fuel I have left, so I, if I have to ration, I can. Those canisters 
a lot of times you don't know how much fuel you're going to have left. So another thing to think about. All right.